everybody, welcome back to Insane Brit Gaming. I've been Insane Brit, and uh, if you're watching this, you're probably YouTube or just interested in YouTube issues going on uh, right now. I don't normally talk a lot about these kind of things, but there are things happening uh, on YouTube that uh, I didn't know about until just a few days ago, uh, and I want to give you the gist of it. I'm not more or less going to... I can't go into mass detail of every single detail of every single thing that's going on, but I'm going to give you uh, the gist of it and just give you the absolute rundown and my advice uh, if you're going to be affected uh, by this uh, to a point. So anyway, especially if you're a gamer as well, this may intrigue you as well. So first and foremost, I'm going to go down the verification status. Uh, this is basically like the blue check mark for Twitter. They have it for YouTube. You may have noticed about uh, that on some people's channels who are bigger YouTubers. I'm not too sure of the... Um, how many subs or whatever you have to have, whether it's 100,000, 200,000, a million subs to have that verification status. And this does a couple of things. Um, but before I get into that, uh, an email got sent out to some of or all of the big YouTubers who have this verification status saying that next month they were going to take it away. Um, and a lot of people had problems with this. And there's a couple of reasons why. Uh, and we have an example as well that I'm going to give you. So first and foremost, uh, it offers uh, protection for YouTubers as well. So and um, it basically and companies, because then if you know it's if it's a check marked and it's official uh, YouTube channel, you know that that is the channel that uh, you want to perceive. If you've seen someone offline on, on, sorry, on another platform and you want to go to the channel, you can follow them. If it's the official Sony PlayStation one or whatever, you know, et cetera, et cetera, it goes on. Or maybe just even YouTube personalities, um, you know that you are uh, basically the companies. Uh, are, if they want to do brand deals and stuff like that, they know it's the official channel. If you're a uh, viewer, you know that the person you're going to or giving money to or supporting is the official channel and the official person. Uh, there is an instance of some guy getting scammed in America. Uh, basically, a company came up to the original channel and said, hey, we made a deal with you. Is this you? And he said no. And it turned out somebody was copied the artwork of his channel, did a similar channel, and basically uh, uploaded, every, uh, downloaded his videos from YouTube and uploaded them to the fake channel, costing that company, that specific company, fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, it's a lot of money, and it's in court process now, kind of thing, and it's ongoing. But uh, yeah, that's just to give an example of a company being scammed and a YouTuber, you know, just oh, losing out on a ton of money that he might have been able to have earned himself. Um, so it's to prevent people from getting scammed or companies from getting scammed and of course you trying to support your favorite YouTubers and stuff like that. Um, and that's primarily what it's all about. Uh, and to our amazement of, of YouTubers, if you're a YouTuber and you know there's problems in the community and stuff, we've always complained to YouTube uh, for the longest time and they just don't listen. It's always counterproductive uh, and they mess everything up and it frustrates us. And we're trying to tell YouTube this is what we want and this is going to make it better. Please implement it because it's a team at the end of the day, uh, content creators and YouTube. If you listen to the content creators, we can create a dialogue and then things will get better as as we improve the site overall uh, and it never seems to happen well amazingly after people tweeted made videos a couple of big youtubers whoever they are i can't remember all of them basically after 24 hours after this all went on and uh, even fans tweeting as well on twitter i suppose to youtube about this amazingly google and youtube listened and they've actually pulled that back and decided not to do it in 24 hours which is absolutely amazing um they had this planned and then because of the community they said oh wait a minute we've got to pull back and not do this it's a bad idea after all and that's great that's fantastic and that's a step forward for youtube to listen to the community and you know those reasons why at the end of the day youtube want to make money we want to make money and you want to be entertained it's a partnership at, uh, at all levels so it's great that they're finally listening uh it is a big thing uh, for them for this to happen and hopefully going forward this more and more will happen uh, to benefit the community and the user as well so that's the verification status they're pulling it back it was supposed to be pulled uh be happening next month and in 24 hours uh after all that went down uh basically they've pulled that decision back thank god and they've rolled back that decision that's that's, that's great uh, moving forward there are other issues going on with youtube and uh, two more that i want to talk about in this video um and that is uh what's the next one Keeping kids safe on YouTube. Now, I do game a gaming channel. I don't really market to kids. I don't do Nintendo, basically, because Nintendo basically want you to be in their program, and uh, you have to kiss their ass over it and everything, and I'm not going to do that. 
Uh, I want to be me at the end of the day. Uh, but I do play other games. I think the kiddish play game I've actually played is maybe Lego. And I know a lot of kids watch that. It's one of my famous uh, videos. Uh, people, because I rage in it, I think. I think a couple of parents were unhappy about it. Because when they put it on for their kids, um, <laughs> basically I was uh, swearing in it and everything. But overall, I am not a kid's channel. And that is my philosophy. I don't really market to kids, even though I play games. But whatever. It is what it is. I can see my demographic. Most of them about 80, uh, 13 to... 25 maybe and in 35 to 40 um and that's more or less my demographic even though i do food and games you know what i mean whatever um so yeah they're making these changes what are these changes to protect kids well there's a few of them um well basically um they're no longer going to show uh basically when you watch a youtube video the ads follow you around uh, from whatever you've been marketing on maybe even on amazon they might follow you to youtube or whatever else and they're like personalized ads that are going to be pique your interest. Now, most parents give their child the an iPad and they say, go watch YouTube. You know, it shuts the kids up for a couple of hours. It's the way it is, right? I'm not judging you for that. It is a reality of today's modern life. Um, I know somebody whose sister um, knew how to use an iPad age four. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know what I was doing age four, but it was nowhere near doing anything like that. Um, <clears throat> so you can see how the, you know, kids are tech savvy these days. And YouTube is the go-to, uh, you know, on the internet kind of thing. And uh, that's just the way it is. So, of course, they're being marketed to by these edgy content creators or more edgier people. And there's dodgy things on there on YouTube anyway uh, that kids shouldn't be seeing, whether it be about a monster or some kind of, you know, um, I don't know, perverted dance. I don't know, whatever, you know, some kind of music video the parents ain't happy watching. And basically what they're going to do is, is they're going to put safe ads on uh, these children's uh, videos uh, if you're marketed to children now there's going to be a system in place I'm not too sure when but it's going to happen before 2020 because uh, it all kicks off in January so they're giving everyone about four months to get ready and basically what's going to happen is they're going to put safe ads on those kids uh, programs so if you're if you and you'll be a system where you label yourself kid friendly or you can be edgy or whatever right I'm going to be edgy all day long I'm not going to bother even saying you know and they're looking for people to lot who lie to youtube about trying to promote to kids when they're not really a kids uh channel or anything like that uh, but that apparently is going to happen i don't know i haven't done it yet um they haven't brought up a system or whatever when it says hey would you like to be on edgy your side or do you want to be kid friendly uh but that is going to happen and what they're going to do is, is they're going to make put generic ads or ads that are not going to be uh, edgy on your kids uh content so for example if you're a channel which unboxes action figures that's going to be marketed to kids most likely even though adults watch it and that is a reality does not lie um you know basically you're going to have generic ads and they're not going to be very interesting and they're going to be less clickable but that kind of makes sense to me in a way i don't understand why they didn't do this before because why didn't they just put like children's cartoon ads or or, or um action figure ads on children's content like action figure unboxings or um some kind of pepper pig or whatever market to children yes it's an ad and it's supposed to be appealing to children but that way it's going to be a safe ad and it's going to uh, possibly you're going to earn more money from it because the person watching it even though it's a child is basically going to most likely to click on it uh it is what it is it, it, it just makes and that way the um the user makes more money and youtube but maybe they don't really like the idea of market uh, having an ad on uh our children's content but at the same time that's the business model anyway so you're going to have some kind of ad on it. So if it's going to be generic or whatever, uh, that people are just less likely to actually click on it. Uh, if you're a children's content creator, you're going to make less money uh, than you usually do because it's going to be a generic ad, whatever. Um, and that's just what's going to happen going forward. Gamers will be affected to a point. Um, I mean, it depends what I mean. I don't know. It depends what games you play, maybe. But either way, I'm gonna be. I'm. I'm because of my language. I'm gonna be like edgy, and I'm not gonna be like kids friendly. No way. And that's just a bracket they're gonna put on. Uh, they're gonna put on us either way. You know what I mean? Uh, so let's look at some further details here, or my advice for that actually. Uh, so yeah, the changes come 2020. So I assume this is gonna be in place before then. They're giving us a couple of months to organize yourselves. Now, if you are, um, blah blah blah. Yeah. So my last piece of advice on that subject, though, is if you are a parent or whatever and you're worried about your kids seeing some dodgy things on YouTube or whatever it is or some loud mouth like me who swears a lot on in gameplay and stuff. Um, 
download the YouTube Kids app, and then that way it's all going to be kid-friendly content, and you don't have to worry about it. Uh, it looks a bit childish, and somebody like 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds may not like it, or whatever. Well, actually, you, you can be 13 and have a YouTube channel, apparently. Um, I didn't know that. But anyway, um, so yeah, if you're a parent, download the YouTube Kids app, and it's only going to be kid-friendly content. That is my recommendation for you. There are these things in place for parents to do, but a lot of parents don't know about them, or whatever, and it's kind of frustrating, because then we all get the blame, and it's like what the parents were... Um, didn't know or weren't informed about the YouTube Kids app, you know, and that would have been a way of you, um, you know, uh, keeping your kids safe or whatever else if they don't see edgy content. Uh, but the next thing I want to talk about, and this is very important, is limited ads. Um, and I don't understand why YouTube didn't do this from the beginning. I said this straight off the bat. When the ad apocalypse had, and you had a group of people saying, we are unhappy with our ads being on this edgier content. We don't like the rude comedians. We don't like the uh edgy swearing gamers we don't like this we don't like that whatever it was going to be they were unhappy right and they tried to punish youtube and pull their money back and said we ain't happy about it okay so you got some kind of power now me personally would have done this this was my reaction straight away and that was okay cool we got three four billion users on our platform hundreds of millions of people and with these targeted ads you could market your product to these individuals on a mass scale every day to millions of people um and it would be constant because of so many people on and off youtube watching these big videos um etc etc now that is a big marketplace it's not the only marketplace yeah but it's a still a big marketplace and it's a fantastic place to advertise your products i would have then banned made a list and just said okay and banned all of these companies that were doing that. I would have banned them from my YouTube platform. And then I would have went out and got edgier content creators out there. I mean, uh, edgier advertisements out there. Um, I know that YouTube probably have their own ethics and morals and policies. And that's probably why it didn't happen at the beginning. I would have went and got the NRA. I said, hey, do you want to advertise on our on our website? On edgier content? Uh, R-rated movies, another one. I'll go and get more of those and I'll, I'll put them out there etc etc people are willing to pay there's so many companies uh from wherever all over the world that um that want to advertise then just simply go and find people that don't have a problem with that edgier content with the rude comedians or the bad gamers you know who talk shit or whatever it is um just do that and i would have banned these actual companies who were moaning about it just on principle that's me doing it principally right it's not a great business model uh like very smart wise i mean it's quite petty to be honest with you that's just the way i would have done it um but of course youtube changed and everything else and that's fine uh now they've of course got a system where you can now say because what happens is is the company comes up with um and puts their ads on the video and then they look at it and go this did well here this did well there and then they continue that process marketing strategy and go forward with it or maybe they change it if, it, if they don't feel it was very successful so anyway now what YouTube is doing is finally pulled their finger out kind of thing. And they've basically got all the people over here on the left side here saying safe content. We, we want it only in safe content and it's great, blah, 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 whatever. And YouTube is saying, cool, fine, go over there. And then YouTube in the center is taking money from this side. Um, and that's cool. Now what they're doing is on the limited ad space, there is a market for the limited ads. There is a market for that edgier content. Deadpool, uh, rude comedians, mouthy gamers, whatever, whatever you want to call that kind of stuff that isn't safe, uh, or that edgier music video or whatever, you can put those, uh, the edgier advertisements uh, on those particular videos if, if edgier uh, companies want to actually reach that market. And there is a marketplace for it. That's why people go to see the rude comedians who are, who are offensive and watch the, the music videos with, you know, all the... I don't know, bad language or whatever, just to give you an example, I don't know. Um, but you know what I mean? There's a marketplace for it. And so YouTube sitting in the center is going to be taking money from the left side and the right side. And all, you know, it's going to benefit from it. And I don't understand why they didn't do that in the beginning. Getting uh, more edgier companies out there that want to advertise on this edgy content because they are there. It is a marketplace for it. And, uh, you know. It is what it is. So, guys, I just wanted to give you that update about what's happening with YouTube. Uh, it isn't probably the full detail, but it's the gist of what's happening. Uh, those three things. 
kids are being protected, verification status, and of course limited ads now being able to earn more money with more edgier um, advertisements on them, uh, which will appeal to you and me or whatever. You know, that's just the way it's going to be. Uh, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just a short update about what's happening on YouTube right now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you like your edgy content or whatever, check out my completed playthroughs. Um, I got my FIFA Sims. And if you want some safe content, is it safe even? The food reviews? I think a lot of people, I don't know, a lot of people watch them. Uh, that is in the link in the description below. I don't swear as much in the food reviews. I don't think I do. I can't remember. It's edgy. It's risky. I don't know. Could Anything could happen. Anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.